Is Spam and Pumpkin Spice a match made in heaven? How about Pringles and Ramen? These canned foods weren't meant to stay on shelves forever. Before Mario or Master Chief or those guys from Among Us, the early 1980s belonged to a yellow circle that ate ghosts and went In the early 80s, the country was deep in the throes of Pac-Man fever. This yellow circle was so popular that you could even find him in the canned food aisle. Chef Boyardee's Pac-Man pasta was made up of noodles vaguely shaped like Pac-Man, his perpetual ghost antagonist, and power pellets. It came in three flavors, tomato sauce with cheese, sauce with mini meatballs, and a golden chicken sauce. Let's just say it didn't look very appetizing, though. Chef Boyardee did at least go all in on the marketing, which included an animated commercial that featured Pac-Man chomping on whole cans of pasta. At the height of the 1980s excesses, the country was introduced to its first commercially sold energy drink, Jolt Cola. Claiming to have double the caffeine of an ordinary soda, Jolt was marketed toward younger consumers, acting as the fuel for raging parties and night owls pulling all-nighters. Considering that this was during the time when Diet Coke and caffeine-free Coke also hit the market, Jolt was going against the prevailing trends in the beverage industry. It did this proudly, printing its slogan on the front of every can, all the sugar and twice the caffeine. Despite its reputation as caffeinated jet fuel, Jolt was limited to a mere 72 milligrams of caffeine per can, thanks to FDA soda regulations. In truth, an ordinary cup of coffee had far more caffeine than a can of Jolt, and modern energy drinks also have much more caffeine. Jolt would eventually go under in 2009, only to make a sudden re-emergence in 2017 at Dollar General and Amazon. Would you like some more? <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> As soon as fall rolls in, the pumpkin spice products and all the jokes about them are in season. Despite all the grumbling, pumpkin spice remains incredibly popular, and that's not changing anytime soon. Food companies have had a lot of fun trying to make this flavor work in a variety of contexts, with everything from Oreos to Pringles. But the award for taking a joke too far goes to Spam for releasing a pumpkin spice flavor of canned meat. If a can of pumpkin spice flavored pork product sounds unappetizing to you, then you might be in for a surprise, as this one off gag reportedly sold out in just a few hours. But it appears that Hormel, the makers of Spam, know when a joke has run its course, as there's yet to be a seasonal return. Some canned foods have only a brief moment in the sun before biting the dust, while others last for generations and then finally fizzle out. The latter is the case for Campbell's Pepper Pot Soup. It was one of the company's earliest products, in fact, debuting around the turn of the 20th century. It was based on Philadelphia Pepper Pot, a recipe that came to the city of brotherly love by way of the West Indies in the 1700s. The soup was thick like a stew and contained beef tripe, cayenne pepper, vegetables, and spices. It was quite popular in the early 20th century, but later fell out of fashion. It would eventually see a resurgence during America's bicentennial in the 1970s, when interest in colonial-era culture hit a high point. But that rejuvenated popularity didn't last, and Campbell's discontinued its version of Pepper Pot in the 2010s. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way that food producers do business, with some choosing to cut back the number of products they offer in an effort to streamline their operations. One such company is General Mills, the maker of Progresso Soup. In July 2020, General Mills announced that it would be discontinuing 40 different items from Progresso's soup menu. Interestingly enough, these cuts weren't prompted by falling sales. The opposite was true, actually, as Progresso sales went up sharply during the early stages of the pandemic. However, the retailers who stocked the company's soups wanted to whittle down the selection to the best-selling products, and General Mills obliged. Thankfully, Progresso still continues to hold on to its most popular items like chicken noodle soup and clam chowder. But it does cut deep knowing that a selection of less common yet still beloved soups have been put on the back burner, quite possibly for good. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's good, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's not Progresso. Way back in the early 2000s, Campbell aired a series of commercials featuring popular NFL players enjoying Campbell's Chunky Soup. But the Chunky line was actually born back in the 1970s. Early marketing for the product claimed that it was so thick and full of meat and vegetables that you could easily enjoy it with a fork. The family favorite! Sales for Campbell's Chunky doubled between 1997 and 2002. They still sell chunky soups to this day, but not every flavor has been a hit, as the meatball bust in sausage rigatoni and the Philly-style cheesesteak have both gotten the axe. Simply put, a hit series of food products still needs to occasionally trim the fat, especially if the sales figures don't justify keeping something around. Riding the tide of energy drinks that dominated the market in the early 2000s, Full Throttle debuted in 2004 as part of Coca-Cola's attempt to break into the field. 
Marketed specifically to the 20 to 30 year old demographic, Full Throttle was part of the extreme scene right alongside Monster and Rockstar. Coca Cola eventually ended up selling the Full Throttle line and all of its other energy drink brands to Monster in June 2015. In return, Coca Cola purchased a 16.7% stake in Monster. While Monster would continue to sell Full Throttle, it began shrinking the selection, which used to be quite expansive. As of 2022, there are only two flavors listed on the brand's website. Soon enough, it might find itself in the discontinued bin entirely. Not every flavor combination can be an instant smash hit like, say, chocolate and peanut butter. You got peanut butter on my chocolate! Well, you got chocolate in my peanut butter! Sometimes in the mad science that is soft drink development, two great tastes might end up not so great when joined together. So it was with the very limited premiere of Black Cherry Vanilla Coke, which opened and closed within the span of one year, from 2006 to 2007. After that, Coca-Cola continued to sell separate vanilla and cherry flavors, but didn't combine the two again. But they may have been a little too hasty with this decision. As reported by CNN, Coca-Cola's freestyle machines, which let people combine different sodas and flavor syrups in one drink, also collect data on consumer preferences. It turns out that there were enough people mixing cherry and vanilla to convince Coca-Cola to bring the combo back in 2020, only this time as simple cherry vanilla Coke, not black cherry. Trader Joe's is slightly higher class than your typical grocery store. Its success can be traced to how the chain is able to offer unique and exclusive food items while still charging customers a fair price. Like a typical grocery store, TJ's offers enough to make it a one-stop destination for almost all of your regular supplies, including pet food. However, the Trader Joe's pet food aisle is a bit less full than it used to be, as a few products have been nixed from the store selection. According to a 2022 company press release, five flavors of cat food and two flavors of dog food from Trader Joe's own branded pet food line were discontinued due to underperforming sales and issues with sourcing ingredients. Some products are not so much discontinued as they are reformulated to the point of no longer being the original thing. For example, Four Loco started out as a caffeinated alcoholic beverage, but mixing caffeine and alcohol can be very dangerous for the human body. Caffeine's ability to negate our feelings of tiredness makes us less likely to slow down after several alcoholic beverages. And caffeine can even fool your body into not realizing just how drunk you are. With Four Loco combining energy drink levels of caffeine with a hefty 12% alcohol content in a sugary package that that appealed to underage drinkers, it was a disaster waiting to happen. Well, how many servings are in a can? 120. All right. <laughs> Several states moved to ban the sale of Four Loco, and eventually, the caffeine content was lowered and eventually removed altogether. Today, Four Loco is still on sale and is even keeping up with modern trends, as it released a hard seltzer that contains a whopping 14% alcohol by volume. Bubblegum's appeal is typically more about blowing and popping bubbles than it is about the actual flavor. But there are those who really do love the nostalgic flavor of bubblegum, so much so that someone tried to trap it in a can. Canned bubblegum soda started as a bubblegum syrup for snow cones, and then it eventually became a carbonated beverage. Then Wrigley, which produces Hubba Bubba bubblegum, officially licensed the product as Hubba Bubba Soda. This odd product naturally didn't last forever, though some fans did launch an online petition to resurrect this dead soft drink. It was ultimately unsuccessful successful. However, the affection was strong enough that a years-old can of Diet Hubba Bubba was eventually being sold for $200 on eBay. Kids typically don't have discerning taste and can be easily persuaded, so they're soft targets for novelty food products. So it's no surprise that Chef Boyardee utilizes a ton of gimmicks for its canned pasta. When the company saw the success that Campbell's was having with its SpaghettiOs, it decided to one-up its competitor by adding X-shaped pasta to the mix. The result was Chef Boyardee Tic-Tac-Toes, which embraced the idea that dinner time could also be game time, as kids could play tic-tac-toe with every spoonful. How you could actually play tic-tac-toe with heaping spoonfuls of pasta was never really explained, but it was a successful enough novelty while it lasted. There's no way you can win that game. I know that. It doesn't. Some discontinued foods are taken off the market not because of poor sales, but because they're limited editions that were never intended to stick around forever. One example came from Pringles, which in 2017 released a chicken-flavored version of its stacked potato chips with top ramen chicken flavoring. Finally, the taste of your first college dorm while you crammed for finals was captured in a can. This variety was part of an exclusive limited promotion with Dollar General, so that was the only place you could buy these chips, which feels appropriate as poor, hungry college students could actually afford them. Not only was this promotion successful, it was enough of a hit to justify another limited outing in 2018, when these top ramen chips returned to Dollar General. But once again, they were only available briefly before being shelved. So we'll just have to wait patiently for the moment when Pringles decides to run another limited promotion, because it sounds like they actually tasted pretty good. 
Sometimes junk food is just junk food, no matter how you market it. Many fruit juices can say they're packed with vitamins, but they mostly contain vast quantities of sugar. Lifesaver soda, on the other hand, made no bones about what it was made of. It was a liquefied soda version of the classic hard candy, and it came in a rainbow can like a larger, squatter version of a roll of Lifesavers. It arrived on the scene in 1995 and came in a variety of fruit-inspired flavors. But now, we can only imagine just how sweet it tasted back in the day. The failure of Lifesaver soda might have been surprising to the company Company, as it had reportedly done well in a taste test. The original Lifesavers remains a popular candy for those who like something sweet or to freshen their breath. But clearly, consumers didn't also want it in beverage form, so it was quickly scrapped and relegated to the bin of bad ideas by massively successful companies.